Hey folks, good morning. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm finally going to finish the concrete entrance into my back room. So we'll go over and take a look. I'll show you what we're gonna do, and then we're gonna get started. And I probably should say, I'll show you what they're gonna do, because unfortunately, as much as I hate it, I can't lift 60 pound bags of cement. So that is gonna have to be done by my buddies. You've probably seen this back room before, and if you haven't, well, welcome to the channel, because this is the entrance into my super insulated, partially subgrade back room. This is not your typical cinder block wall. If you look at the outside of this wall, it's actually done with surface bonded cement. Surface bonding actually is stronger than your standard brick and mortar. It's dang near bulletproof and it's what they use to make cisterns. And you don't have to fill all these voids if you're just building a wall with it. You just fill the tops and you'd be fine. But in this case, because I'm putting a wall on top, then I need to be able to anchor that wall into the concrete. Time to get set up, so let's get cracking. come out it's come off well we need to okay. dump, dump this dump okay. that you can put that in a corner so that'll be okay just try to get it in a corner okay. i'm worried about it falling off yeah. well we need to get that screw tightened up did you guys when you put it on did you give it a tap yeah, yeah. oh tap okay i'm gonna give it another tap okay here we go oh. Oh. That does look a little soupy. Yeah, it feels so well. Shoot. Well. Make, he said get it as tight as you can, hand tight. Yeah, we do that. Hand tight, don't even. And tap it tighter with the hammer once the threads are fully engaged. Put it back on the knob. I guess you just have to. You want to pour the rest out? Yeah, I'll just go ahead and pour that out, I guess. Can we turn it on to do it? or? I, I think you can just. Yeah, put, yeah, we can turn it on, that we'll. Grab the shovel, maybe steer it. I mean, uh, right there on the floor. Grab one bag, two, or two bags. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. You can do every boy. You don't need to just fill them all up. Okay, let's All right, I gotta go turn the water pump on, folks. We're getting there, but, but the uh, 
cement mixer that we've got from a friend of ours. It's got a, a T-bolt that holds the drum to the motor. And it's pretty badly stripped. He pointed that out to me when I picked it up from him and you kind of have to tighten it up and then tap it in. But we're actually finding that the cement is hitting the T-bolt and backing it off. <laughs> so the drum keeps wanting to come off. So I don't know if we're gonna be able to keep using the cement mixer or if we're gonna have to do it by hand. And I, I say we're, but let's be honest folks, my buddies are doing all the heavy lifting for me because my back is still not there. So it's good to have good friends, I'll tell you that. And I do appreciate them. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that that solar panel is turned better into the sun. And I'm gonna turn the water pump on because we're running through a lot of water. So turn that on. Turn this solar panel, which is fairly easy to turn. And we'll try to get it straight on into the sun if we can. The shadow's pretty good behind it. And now I get back there and do what I can, do my part, try to I can do some of the finish work and set the J-bolts. It's a bit dry. I'd, I'd say it is a little dry. Just a little. You don't have to reserve the two bags now. You don't want to wet the other one. There you go. Okay, so I would do some in this one here to start out. Yeah, you could probably set it down now. I mean, it'd be, it'd be, it'd be easier for him to. There are ways to go on that Shot, let it rip. I had to put those screws in because the bear tried to get it off. Gonna get stinky now. It's been a long time, folks, so this will be an interesting, uh, interesting look at this thing because I haven't pulled this up in so long. Ah, yuck. <laughs> Yeehaw, that looks nice. Don't drop anything in there. All right, <laughs> where's that hose at? Oh, yeah, that smells good, buddy. Let's take this over here. See if you can. Yeah, you have to bring your fresh washer in the corner. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Is this one the piece? Or? Yeah. All right. Is that the top post team? This is the gray water drain system. There, it's working. So the way this works is the gray water comes in, in this side here from the cabin, mm -hmm. dumps into here, and then there's a filter right there that at the bottom of it, there's an inlet that allows the water to come up the outside of the filter. Then it goes through the filter and then can go out that green pipe that goes out to a French drain over there where the shovels are. And so all of the, all the heavier stuff settles to the bottom. Mm -hmm. So you get a sludge build up at the bottom and then as it fills up, you can hear it, it's starting to drain out really good. So it, it's actually drained out about maybe three or four inches already. Mm. So it was getting plugged up. And honestly, it's been a long time since I bothered to clean that out. I don't even remember when I did it last. Years. Looks pretty good. Okay, we can put that lid back on. And then uh, put the, the screws back in it once it's on there and we're good to go. Pretty good system. I got that from the natural homes. That's to keep the bears out of it. 
All right, folks, here we go. <laughs> now, bear in mind, none of us are professionals, and I'm not actually super concerned about the quality of the concrete, quite frankly, as long as it holds these bolts in well enough. It's all that really matters to me. It doesn't have to be filled. It doesn't, doesn't need it from a strength perspective because dry stacked cinder block is very, very strong, much, much stronger than a regular cinder block and mortar wall because of all of that. It's a fiber bonded mortar that you'd put on like stucco and it is rock solid. So we ended up filling the whole thing with cement. Um, you know, normally what you would do is you'd fill, you know, the corners with cement and then you'd put the centers, you'd fill those with dirt with about six to eight inches left on top and then just fill across, the, fill the rest so that you've got a solid concrete on the top and then the corners are done, but it's not really, it doesn't really matter. All you're doing is adding some thermal mass. So now that that's solid, once it's cured, I will have to smooth it out because when I did the surface bonding in probably November of 2013, I was in a rush because it was getting cold and freezing at night. So I was kind of concerned because with surface bonding, it needs to be cured right. You've got to keep getting it wet and uh, let it cure naturally and slowly so you don't just put it on and then leave it. You actually put it on and then mist spray it with water periodically to keep it so that it can cure nice and solid. And it was the first time I'd ever done any such thing. And I have never done mortar work. I've done plenty of little home concrete jobs and actually worked on a construction crew and did concrete um, on foundation work, mostly the labor. I didn't do the finish work. And as you can see, we were too dry in the beginning here. Um, you know, it's okay. Some of it will be loose. It, I'm not actually concerned. As long as the bolts hold well enough to hold the, uh, the walls down, that's all that really matters. It's, it's, there's nothing structural about it with the cement in there. It's really just there to add some thermal mass and to allow these bolts to be solid. And the way the walls will frame is they'll frame on an angle from here all the way up to there. And so that'll be a pretty steep angle, about 60 degrees. We'll frame up a wall there on both sides and probably just come across there with the plate. And then once all that's done, I can then build my, my two storm doors that will open up like this and one will open that way. And we'll tie some cable to the wall so that when the doors open, they don't just flop open, they'll be held open at a bit of an angle. That way, you're not gonna break any hinges or anything. Then you can just step down in and we're gonna take that Reflectix and then we'll go ahead and staple that to the back of the door. So that'll give a little bit more of a solid, you know, uh, insulated door surface, not by much, but it'll reflect the heat back. And then once this entrance is built, then it will be insulated. The walls will be insulated with R21 or R19. And then the storm doors will be R10 so that when it closes, I'll at least have an R10 face here, but then I'll also have the door that I'll work on as well. And I may put some R10 behind it if I can fit it in there, but Otherwise, it did pretty good. We actually ran the, the uh, mixer off of my solar power. I didn't even run the generator. It was only pulling about maybe, gosh, I don't know, four to 500 watts. So, I mean, I was pulling in about 2,400 watts of solar. So it's not like I'm worried about it. But unfortunately, the mixer, the main threads that hold the drum onto the motor are so badly damaged over the years that we couldn't keep it screwed in tight right there and as a result of course it uh, kept coming off so we had to quit using it and the funny thing is is that once we started using the wheelbarrow we got to mix better <laughs> so it is what it is i'll have to probably take a bit of a grinder or something and smooth that surface out um, because of that surface bonded cement but otherwise i think we're good enough it'll work we can get everything put together so i'm happy about that so i think what i'll do is i'll close this door and uh, seal that up. <laughs> That's tight. <laughs> I have two hands to do that, folks. Hold on. Time to go take a break. I'll be back to you shortly. One, two, three rounds, slow fire. I love that smell. Make the weapon safe. Get a pen out. And then after you fire those three, we'll. Uh, Tim and I'll shoot. Breathe, relax, aim, stop, squeeze. Make sure you got a good position before you start shooting. Take the 
weapon safe. Okay, let me try mine before we go down there. Yeah, it doesn't, you know, it's funny, like it, you expect it to be, there's like, like Perfect. Nice. Looking good. Thank you. Much better. We'll keep Darcy's tree nice and healthy. And I'll put a camera under it too. Looking good. We'll clean up the branches underneath there. Hey, good morning. It's gorgeous morning today. Quiet, other than Lance's Jeep's running, but otherwise it's pretty quiet. Got a little bit to do this morning. Got to put some reflectics on the back of the back room door. We got to put some two by eight down on the concrete for those bolts and just kind of tie it down and that'll make it a little better for putting some insulation on top of there to cover it up temporarily. And then next trip, I'm going to build that back storm door. So got a few things to do this morning. I'll bring you along. Let's get to it. Beautiful morning though, isn't it? Clear. I don't see a cloud in the sky. As always, I hate to be leaving, but uh, there's always next time. We'll be back out again soon. Got a few things to put away, like the barbecue and all that, and a little bit of cleanup to do. All right, well, we've got some work done, folks. It's not pretty. It isn't the best concrete work in the world. I won't win any awards for it. <laughs> However, we've got some two by eight pressure treated base plates on, bolted down, except I put a bolt there too deep. That one is kind of too deep. Those two are really too deep. But I think I'll probably bring a grinder back and just smooth it out a bit because the surface bonded cement that I put on there 11 years ago humps things up in the centers. And uh, so the, the concrete work, eh, some of it's not bad, but for the most part, it ain't great. But the truth is, it's more about thermal mass and bolting these down than anything else. So it doesn't support anything. It's waterproof the way it is. So that'll just add to the beginnings of when we build the storm door entrance here that'll be our platform to build it on and i'll put some more base plates down 
um, we'll have to notch around those guys and then nail straight into the pressure treat. I think it'll be fine. So I think that'll work. And then all of this siding here comes off. Um, obviously there, all that'll come off. We'll build that storm door entrance. I'll mill up some new live edge. We'll put all that on and then we'll treat it. And then back here, I've just got to put some EMT out here somewhere for those uh, low voltage wires that should not be run with the high voltage. And so then the 120 volt stuff, we'll put an EMT in there so that we can run everything through the wall. And once we've got EMT going through the wall, then I can finish this inside that piece there, which I think will be okay. Yeah, we'll be all right with that. So that'll, that'll make a big difference getting this done. The next year I'll pour the foundation for the uh, generator and build a roof out over the generator as well. So I think that'll work pretty good. And then uh, the rest of this, like I said, we'll get that done and I think we'll be good to go. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Honestly, it's a cabin. I'm not building the Taj Mahal, so I'm pretty thrilled with that. So I think now, folks, it's time to go ahead and pack up and get out of here. So that's all I got for you today. But I'll drop another video right here for you to check out. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Y'all have a great day. The old jar hit out.